Explore Tulsa is an opportunity to see behind the scenes of Tulsa's most unique places. To hear the stories of real people who are doing fantastic things and who love living here. We look at the people, places, and events that make Tulsa home. Welcome to a few minutes of Exploring Tulsa. Hi, I'm Austin Morton, and Trish and I are glad you've joined us again this week. We are, Austin. We have a good show for you this week, and it's always fun for us to explore Tulsa with you. Thanks for joining us. We start this week's show with a short drive to the other side of Broken Arrow to a little cafe on Main Street America that has a lot more going on than it first appears. A cafe with a purpose, and just a great story of doing everything they can to honor Brandon, and to give back to others like him in a very meaningful way. My husband and I um, have been married 29 years. We have three children. Uh, we have a couple of grandchildren from my daughter. We've lost our middle son, Brandon, to cystic fibrosis. Uh, and that was five years ago in Arizona. And the meal table, we didn't even realize. We always knew the meal table was very important to us. As a family, if it was in the hospital, in a restaurant, at home, it was a place for us to come together and to make memories. Because I know now that we've lost our family members, those memories made around the meal table is what's gonna last. Those are our moments that we get to keep forever. So it's just very, very uh, poignant and very important that we try to share that with everyone. One of my son's biggest goals in life was to be able to educate people about CF. It's a very long struggle. It is a constant battle to live knowing the outcome and the realization that um, you will succumb to that disease. There's no cure for it. So much like it was a childhood disease um, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they're living to be about 25, 30, 32 years old now. There are a few that are older than that, but most end up succumbing to that. Now, we do two fundraisings a year for Brandon, um, where we donate proceeds, all proceeds goes to Brandon's Hope. And um, that's his birthday, July 26th, and then his passing day of March 12th of 2013. Anything to keep the memory alive. My son-in-law also passed away 10 months before my son. Uh, that's Amanda's husband, Moody Aga. And so um, a lot of what, like the Moody's cucumber salad, those proceeds goes to Brandon's Hope as well. Um, our desserts proceeds goes to Brandon's Hope. So um, a lot of that, um, we try to really keep that momentum going. On the menu, there are different things in my family, you know, so Moody's Cucumber Salad, um, we have my husband's barbecue bowl, I have, my twin brother has a breakfast menu item, you know, my dad has a sandwich, my mom has a burger, um, and so Mandy has her spaghetti, you know, so um, we just need to add the, the kids, you know, I don't have Jaden, Noah, and Milo on there yet, but um, so I like to change things up. We're always changing our menu. I like to just put flavors together. So 65, it was a way to teach children to say cystic fibrosis. So it's 65 roses. That is the, um, the story. And so much of what we do is we'll post little things about flyers about cystic fibrosis with the 65 roses so that people understand what that is. We're very blessed. We really are. He said CF didn't define him. He had CF, but it wasn't who he was. And uh, he was able to marry. They got married young. He was married for four years before he passed. Um, loved children. Um, he was unable to have children of his own because of the disease. Uh, but him and his wife had talked about adopting um, a little baby. So, you know, we, we get those memories that he got to share with us. So just 
knowing what his battle was, he just was always smiling and always positive. And if you could have known him, he just was a light, you know? He's my sunshine. It's always gonna be my sunshine. You know, Austin, of course it's sad to know that Dixie and her family have lost Brandon. But when you get to know them, you see such a cheery place and such a positive attitude from everyone there. There's pictures all around and reminders of who Brandon was. But don't forget the great menu we saw, Dixie can cook, and loves to share her creations with everyone who walks in. It was a pleasure getting to know all of them and wish them good success in the new location. Not far from Tulsa and worth a little drive. Check them out and say hi from us. Break number one is right now, but we're coming back in a moment to revisit a story we brought you a few months ago. When Explore Tulsa returns in a moment, Discover the benefits of making the right connections at Video Revolution. Connect with the expert staff who will take the time to understand and satisfy your technology needs. The installation staff will make it easy to maximize your new equipment for years of high definition inspiration. Inspirational video and audio now with voice driven built in internet streaming apps. Connections, real live ones with people who know and care. Video Revolution on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. For 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 frames to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa's best. And our drive through at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner & Associates. Hey, missed any of our previous shows or just want to revisit an old segment? Then swing by our YouTube channel to explore all things Tulsa. YouTube, the Explore Tulsa channel. Oh, that's a good reminder, Trish. Our YouTube channel is filling up and a great way to research everything about Tulsa over the past seven years or so. Always a good resource for everything Tulsa. Do you remember talking with Natalie and Ben about their son, Sawyer, and the foundation they set up to help others who are in the same situation as they were? Well, the fundraiser for that organization is around the corner, so we wanted to go back and talk with them again and spend a little time playing with Sawyer. Super Sawyer, as his dad calls him. This is Sire, he's a little shy. Um, Sire was the inspiration for what we're doing, Hearts of Steel Foundation. He was born with four heart defects. We only knew about one at the time when we first found out about everything, but he had a very rough start. And, you know, he's our why. He's why we do this, because he wasn't supposed to survive. And we have so many families who, who walk that journey. They get walked into a room, they are sat at a table, there's a diagram, and it shows you what a normal heart looks like, and then it shows you what your child's heart looks like, and it doesn't look the same. Countless people go through this experience, and it's just, it's shattering. It's earth shattering. You, no one wants to, to hear that about their child, no one wants to hear about that about anyone they love. So we're representing a family. We have a heart family. It's a family and a club that we never wanted to be a part of, but unfortunately we are, and we have to make the best of that. And we are a community that cares about each other. And that's just what we're doing. We're just trying to help them out as much as possible because of little miracles like this who deserve it. And they deserve their parents present while healing. We have a fundraiser coming up and it's come up faster than we anticipated, but we wanted to have an event in the spring. It just became very apparent that we had to do it now so we wouldn't have to stop helping families in the meantime. We need the funds now to be able to keep this momentum going. So we're having something on October 4th at the Bond Center here in Tulsa. It's called Tulsa Has Heart. Even though we are an entity that represents all of Oklahoma, because the event is in Tulsa, we decided to go with Tulsa Has Heart. And we just wanted to represent that Tulsa is giving. The community is generous. They care about what we're doing. We are located out of Tulsa, and we just want to kind of showcase that. We're going to have 
13 to 15 chefs. They are going to be competing for best dish. So the food's gonna be great. This isn't gonna be your typical banquet style food. You know, they're really gonna bring their A game for that. And I think it's wonderful. I think it's great that they can say, yes, we are professional and we are gonna work together on a professional level. We're gonna do events together and we are competitors in some right, but everyone rises above and says, you know what, you're our friend first and we're, we're gonna do this together. And they just really believe in what we're doing. So we have the Arcade Brothers. They're gonna be playing music um, while we're whining and dining everybody. We have Julie Chen as our MC. so excited about that. She is really big in the philanthropy game as far as events go. We were very lucky to have her. And I learned upon getting her involved that she is a heart mom herself. Her son was born with multiple holes in his heart and I didn't, that was something I didn't know. So it felt right. It just kind of all came together well that she, she's going to speak on something that she can attest to and something that she understands, which I think is really cool. We have, of course, the chef pull. We're going to have a really big auction going on, silent and live. So those are going to be some exciting things. We have trips, all kinds of fun trips on the live auction, great restaurant experiences, of course. Um, lots of those donated. We will have Boardwalk representing our beverage service. So we have open bar for everyone that buys a ticket, which hello, that's my love language. I keep telling everybody that. Great food and open bar, you can't really beat that. And then we're gonna gear up towards the end, talk about Hearts of Steel, why it's important. Here's some testimonials on, on why this is needed here in Oklahoma and hopefully raise a lot of money for a good cause. So it should be a pretty fun night. We'd like to do this annually. I'm sure some of the details will shift between now and those times. This will be a big learning experience in some ways, but we're gonna do something every year because the need is there. We, the grant requests aren't stopping. The families need us and the kids need us because hmm, they need their parents to be able to focus on, on healing and, and whatnot. So yeah, we're gonna have lots of volunteers. Almost all of the volunteers are heart parents themselves. We have a photographer that's a heart mom, you know, like I said, Julie Chin. So lots of people that believe in our cause, but also are submerged in our cause too. So that's really exciting. I just love when we get to shine a light on people like this and a cause like this. It's what makes me happy to be a Tolson. Getting a chance to help others just feels good. And this is a really valuable event. And we got to hang with Sawyer and his brother Nolan. Always a good day. There is no lack of energy when those two are around, but that is awesome to get to say. Take a look at heartsofsteelfoundation.org when you can. You won't be sorry. Maybe take a moment now while we take a short break. We're coming back with a story about some really strong women and another good cause when Explore Tulsa returns in a moment. Like parents have a thing, when it gets too quiet in the home, we're worried, you know what I mean? I don't like silence in the home because it, it just feels dead. Silence, that just doesn't feel like a creative place to me. Turning on music in your house is almost like turning on the lights in your house. Music makes mundane stuff better. Silence is probably the enemy of a happy home. Bring the music home on the corner of 71st and Lewis. Okay, Trish, you should probably enter this next segment. You are not afraid to take a stand, and you really like when we highlight a cause with a feminine flair. And this one is certainly that. We talked with a couple of firefighters who are women, and while their numbers may be small, they have a big role to play and a strong presence on duty and off. They're called Tulsa Metro Women on Fire, and they are burning up the airwaves and social media with a brand new calendar, all for a really good cause. The firefighting side of me didn't really come about on my own. I actually came from six years of law enforcement. When people are like, well, how did fire come into play? I just, I want to be something 
be a part of something bigger than myself. I quit that to stay home with my son was when he was born and I actually opened up a CrossFit gym, coached CrossFit for a while and I was an instructor at it, Helmsar, the challenge course up in North Tulsa that's now shut down. Um, and a bunch of the instructors out there were with Tulsa Fire and we don't have a whole lot of girls on the job, you should apply. Something we think you'd be good at. Okay. Firefighting just seems that I'd be good at it. So I went after it, got my EMT, and went through the process and kind of things just unfolded from there. Once this class graduates, I think we're close to 700 firefighters on the job and less than 25 females. I've had so many people come up to me and uh, ask, like, are there actual women on the fire department? And it's shocking because, of course, of course there is. Like, why can't we do it too, you know? We have an all-female Facebook group and it's area-wide. So any female that either volunteers or is career is part of that page. We came up with the word Tulsa Metro Women on Fires because uh, we didn't want to just represent TFD. We wanted to be a part of all of Tulsa. Somebody posted, hey, do you guys want to put an, a female picture in the back of the guy's calendar? To me, I'm like, ding, ding, ding. No, we don't. We want to have our pictures in our own calendar. So Alexa and I kind of talked about it. I think that we first met, I first met with Mark the 1st of June. So Mark Meyer, medically retired um, from Tulsa Fire. He started Hydrants of Hope with his wife, Selena. He created this charity uh, through St. Francis for uh, children who have cancer and their families who are dealing with all the ins and outs of chemo and cancer touches close to us. I mean, with the job that we do, it's something that we know probably, I mean, one of us or more of us out of our academy class is gonna end up with it. So that kind of touched to us, especially with the kid, the kid side of it. So I reached out to him and they were beyond ecstatic to have us choose them. And even still, he gets pretty teary eyed every time we kind of talk about it because we have the potential and the goal to donate big, big money to them. This money is gonna go directly towards, 100% towards Hydrants of Hope. It's huge for us. We had photography donated by Amanda Tyler. We had design um, donated by Stacy Noakes in Oklahoma City. So we had all of these people just I can't imagine anything better in my lifetime than to be able to donate like $50,000 to those families. So to see, you know, I have two healthy kids and I couldn't be more thankful for that. Not everybody's that fortunate. So to be able to take what we earn, I mean, we, we had fun. We played with the calendar shoot. So we had fun out here for two days and then to be able to put that into something that can raise that much money for families that need it, like big time need it. Like, it's huge for me. And then we've had more female outpouring on this calendar than the men, which is shocking to me. We've had women text us, call us. We go out to, I went to a doctor's appointment the other day and the ladies recognized me and were like, please bring calendars up here. This is a huge step for women on the job. Um, it's great because we're showing our city that yes, there are women on the fire department. Uh, yes, we can do the same job as the men. If this triggers, young girls like, hey, I can do this too, and, you know, be successful at it, then we did our job. You know, towards the end of the year, we're gonna have this huge check. We're gonna be able to go up there and see the faces of these children and their families and be a part of that. And I feel like this, it's, it's all for them. It's amazing to, to imagine what that day is gonna be like. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Day one of the calendar sales was this past weekend, and they're already over 5,000 in sales. And all of it is going to Hydrants of Hope. Way to go, girls. We're behind you. That was fun, and they're a lot of fun, too. When we come back from this next break, we're going to introduce you to a little gem of a woman right here on Broken Arrow. So don't go far. We've got more exploring to do just ahead. When it's time to turn it on, turn it all the way on with Sonos. Sonos leading the way in innovative audio solutions for your home. Experience crystal clear, full-bodied sound at any volume level. And with rock-solid wireless performance and a system that's easy to set up, control, and expand, your Sonos can be completely customized to fit your needs. Video Revolution is your Tulsa source for all things Sonos. And right now is the perfect time to come in and talk audio. Video Revolution and Sonos, partners in superior audio quality and exceptional customer service 
on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Sony and Video Revolution take you there. From space travel to world championships. Tomorrow's technology today. 4K smart TVs and the largest flat screens available. Now more than ever, you have the best seat in the world when history is made. Video Revolution. On the northwest corner, 71st and Lewis. Hi, thanks for coming back to more Explore Tulsa. Over the years, we brought you so many interesting people, and we get to do this again with this next story. That's true, Austin. Maybe life didn't start out easy for this broken air woman. And maybe she had to draw a baby doll in order to actually have a baby doll. But she has become a successful painter, writer, mother, wife, and woman. Life is what you make it, and Claudia has a story to tell to prove it. I've painted and drawn since I can remember. That was my toys. You can afford a piece of paper and a pencil, so that was my toys. Drawing was, I drew anything I wanted, and then I had everything I wanted. If I needed a new doll, I drew a picture and I had a new doll. So that's, that's what, how I created. And it's just not stopped, there's just no end to it. I always was interested in history of war. And my father, having been a captain that was killed in the Korean War, I wanted to acknowledge him. His grave is in Salinas, California. I can't get down there to put flowers on his grave. So I went there one day and I told them I would like to paint the Korean War and honor my dad. And that was my way to put flowers on my daddy's grave. And so that started with my suggestion. Then they said, well, if you can do the Korean War, can you do the Civil War? Can you do the Spanish-American War? Can you do the Revolution? And it led to a lot of painting. And I, I really wasn't sure I was up to all that. I just really wanted to do the Korean War. But then I thought, how many people have the same thing in their hearts I had toward my daddy? There's ancestors in all these wars. There's families affected by all these wars. My husband is a 100% disabled vet. He was affected by the Vietnam War. And so I was proud to be able to do his picture. He's the fella standing right there interrogating the Vietnamese soldier. My father was shot in the head and he laid in temperatures more than freezing. He laid alive packed in snow because the mass unit was so full of soldiers they thought would make it. And uh, they didn't think he would make it, so he along with others laid out in the snow until their death. That's touched my heart and affected the way I look at things. And I just think how many other people are there like me, even at the age I am in their 70s, when I go to a show that has to do with war or a soldier. I'm a six-year-old kid sitting there with tears. And so to be able to paint about it and to be able to talk about it frees me up that I can say who I was and what happened and not brush it under the rug. And I think men coming back from the war, they live with their families and they try to have a happy day and brush under the rug the things they can't erase. So I, I think I use my art more than my words to um, compensate for those things. I uh, wrote a book. I have three daughters, dynamic daughters, and I have my youngest daughter that said, Mother, you've got to write your book, you've got to write your book, and I didn't want to. But eventually, I wrote it because if I didn't, she was going to, and she didn't know everything about me. So I wrote my book and I called it The Untaken Pictures because in your life, when you're on camera, you have a big smile. That's what people expect. But life doesn't really run that way and you're not really smiling all the time, though you want to. And that book 
helped me get back to Salinas, California, to my people, my daddy's family, and uh, it got me back home because I had a book signing. That's the best thing that ever happened about that book. But, and then my father was recognized, and my beautiful marriage was recognized because I needed someone to stand by me and to be with me, and I found that person. I've had a wonderful um, year that's brought out some strengths in me. I was diagnosed with cancer a year ago in July. I reached down in my bootstraps and I found a part of me I didn't even know I had. And so uh, I'd say I'm a strong person. I don't appear to be because I'm a tender person, but I found some strengths I didn't know I had. See what I mean? Such an amazing woman. Her creative space may be tiny, just like her, but her work is huge and continues to influence all over Tulsa, Oklahoma, and nationwide. And such a sweet lady. If you get to visit her studio, be prepared to just sit and talk for a while. She loves her faith, her family, and her career, and that is easy to see. We're taking a short break and coming back to say goodbye and show you a little behind the scenes when Fort Tulsa returns after this. The time is right now to consider solutions for outdoor landscape audio. You experience state-of-the-art audio inside your home, now you can have it outside your home, on your patio, around your pool, even your whole backyard. Video Revolution has been providing quality sound systems for over 35 years. We partner with exclusive brands like Klipsch, James Loudspeakers, Sonance, and Episode. Our team of cutting edge experts can assess your needs with a free in-house consultation. It starts simply with a phone call. My name is Randy, I'm here to help. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 claims to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa Best. And our drive through at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner & Associates. Thank you for watching Explore Tulsa. Didn't we bring you four interesting segments? As always, we want to take a moment to say thank you to our sponsors. We couldn't do this without them. Dr. Zellner & Associates and Beta Revolution are both companies that support Tulsa in a huge way. We say thanks for helping us explore Tulsa. As you know, we do four stories a week, 52 weeks a year, so we are always looking for interesting segments. If you know someone we should talk to, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. That's all for now, and we'll see you next time right here on Explore Tulsa. She couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with her shotgun, okay? Dogs were pointing a bird, pheasant hunting, and the bird would fly, and she would bang, bang, and I was behind her, I was behind her out of the picture, and I'd boom, and the bird would fly. <laughs> and she never hit a bird, and made, we made her luck like Annie Oakley. <laughs>